the refit Enterprise is objectively an elegant design. She photographs well from every angle. It is extremely difficult not to take a beauty shot. But for all of that, the design typifies the tension between the ideal in fiction and the practical in the real world. The Enterprise looks good, but unfortunately, she could never be a real spacecraft. In this video, we specifically look at one particular issue, the dorsal or neck connecting the saucer to the engineering hull. But instead of focusing on the dorsal's potential structural strength, or lack of, we will wonder how turbo lifts pass through this particularly narrow space, given what else was accommodated within it. So, what was inside the connecting dorsal? Well, there were five dorsal decks, H, I, J, K and L decks, plus a sixth, the torpedo room complex, on M deck. On or near H deck was the landing ramp and the systems needed for an emergency saucer separation. In many diagrams, the Jeffries tube can be seen running up the aft trailing edge of the dorsal connecting main engineering to the impulse engineering complex. Based on Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, the torpedo magazine must have been on one or more of the decks above the torpedo room, firmly inside the dorsal. And finally, there was the vertical intermix chamber. And it is at this point that the turbo lift issue arises. The vertical intermix chamber and its vertical engineering shaft, for want of a better term, ran from the matter-antimatter storage bottles at the bottom of the engineering hull up to the impulse deflection crystal of the saucer-based impulse engines. We can guess at this position on the Enterprise filming model by using the colour change of the hull. The blue-grey column running up the dorsal on both port and starboard sides. This subtle change in hull hue covered engineering as well, and one cannot help but wonder if this signified some form of hull armour. Someone in the comments section below this video may well be able to answer this question. We can guess the width of the vertical intermix chamber with its engineering shaft to have been between 3.3 and 5 metres wide, so they would have taken up the full width of the connecting dorsal, which, by my rough estimate, was 4.8 metres at its widest point. If this was the case, then the interior of the dorsal would have effectively been divided by the intermix chamber into a front half and a back half. Any turbo lift shaft from the saucer to the engineering hull would have had to run down the dorsal via the front half as there was not enough space to go around the intermix chamber. At the top, the concave shape of the underside of the saucer potentially limited the space available on H deck for both a lift shaft and the impulse engineering complex. This concave did not run the full 360 degrees of the saucer though, but was interrupted where the dorsal met the saucer, where there was an extension running into the core of the saucer at H deck level. This would have been the best place for a horizontal lift shaft as it passed under the impulse engineering complex without interfering with the propulsion machinery. If it were to pass down the dorsal diagonally, the lift shaft could have run down the leading edge of the dorsal, keeping much of the dorsal decks clear. If, on the other hand, the lift shaft ran like steps down through the dorsal, then this would have further subdivided the front portion of the dorsal decks, making access difficult and using up valuable space. Regardless of whether it was diagonal or stepped, a lift shaft running down the front half of the dorsal would run between the torpedo launchers, right there inside the front of the torpedo complex superstructure. If this was the case though, then how did Kirk leave the torpedo room and reach the bridge in the Wrath of Khan? In the scene in which Kirk boards the Enterprise, he walks forward and leaves the torpedo room by a door near the front of the compartment. If this door accessed a turbo lift, then that turbo lift shaft could only have run up through the after portion of the dorsal, 
as there was not the space on M deck or L deck above it to join our theoretical front placed turbo lift shaft. So, how did Kirk's turbo lift get around the intermix chamber? Did the shaft rise up to the saucer and somehow negotiate its tortuous way through the impulse engineering complex, going left or right around the intermix chamber? We can see some reinforcement of where the dorsal meets the saucer, so perhaps this might have answered the question, but it would have been a very inelegant answer. How do we square this circle? Well, the answer is, we don't. It is enough to sit back and enjoy the elegance of the refit enterprise and to put aside our critical thinking skills for the duration of a feature film or six. It is, after all, an illustrative example of the tension between the ideal in fiction and the practical in the real world, but we can still enjoy it. Yet, whatever you do, don't turn your eye towards the Oberth class USS Grissom. That's a rabbit hole best avoided.